Beautiful. This video is about the installation of a rainwater collection tank. The project started in late March 2019 when we went and looked at a water tank that I found on Craigslist. And it ended with uh, delivery of the water tank and placement of the water tank on its uh, final resting place in mid-June of the same year, 2019. The pad for the tank needed to be close to the house because that's where the rainwater was coming from. And we wanted a round pad because the tank was cylindrical. And the pad really had to be cheap. We were trying to keep the cost down. Here are the raw materials. Um, that's three quarter inch plywood. It's been ripped into six inch strips. Um, it's been copper coated and it's been curved. You can see that uh, Every six inches, I've made a hole about an eighth of an inch deep so I can bend that. And these have been extensively waterproofed. Here's the stakes here. Um, and so these are the um, <clears throat> materials that we'll be using to build the pad. It's gonna be a circular pad because the uh, tank is a cylindrical tank and I did not wanna put uh, a round tank on a square pad. This is how we're going to lay out the um, footprint for the pad. That's a 10 foot piece of strut and a piece of rebar there and that's going to be the center point of the circle and we'll swing an arc and create our pad footprint with a marking paint there. Um, see I took out a little bit of the side of the hill here create more of a flat surface and um, so the original thought was to make it a 20 foot pad, but I believe a cylindrical tank is about 12 and I don't want to buy more pea gravel and crushed stone than I need to. Um, and so I think I'm going to reduce it to a 16 foot diameter pad. And that's what we got set up here. We got two foot burned off on that end and we'll be swinging an eight foot arc. This crushed stone will be the base layer. I think I'm going to top it with pea gravel because I think that'll be a bit more friendly to the bottom of the fiberglass tank and probably even top that off with some sand uh, just to make sure that the weight is distributed over as much surface area as possible. This is an irrigation line that I ran into when uh, excavating for the pad and I don't want to reroute it. The ground is too hard, it's way too much work. So where the rim joist, the plywood comes in and intersects, we're going to notch it around the pipe, but you can see the rest of the uh, mark that we scribed on the ground with the spray paint and the unistrut compass based on that center point right there. I copper coated 50 uh, of these stakes. They're 18 inch by 3 inch wood stakes. There's 50 of them and Using Pi, my 16 foot diameter circle will be about 50 feet in circumference. So there's going to be a stake about every foot. And then we'll wrap the plywood around that, two layers thick. And then we're going to fill the outer perimeter with earth to structurally strengthen the rim joist. So the stakes are spaced about every one foot, and the tops of these stakes are all at a consistent elevation. That will uh, guide the uh, installation of what I've been calling the rim joist. It's actually more of a retaining wall or maybe a curved face. 
you can see where the elevation is changing because these are all at the same height as far as the tops go. Then I get over here and you can see that I've marked on these stakes. So I could not drive these farther any down. You should see a Sharpie mark there and that's actually where I'll cut it off to maintain that same elevation. These three stakes here are marked to be shortened. Again, the four-foot level and the strut are used as a compass to describe the uh, perimeter of the pad, but also uh, to establish the elevation. probably got the idea of curving the plywood to curve it from <clears throat> an old episode of this old house and I think I also saw sheet rockers doing it on top and bottom plates so it's trial and error the first time I settled on six inches but the first time I tried it was four inches as you can see and um, I went one layer too deep on plywood you can see there's five laminates there and I went through two and a half, three of them, and that made it too fragile, so this happened. So I went to curve set six inches and um, about three sixteenths deep. And that seems to work a lot better. So that's crushed stone three quarter and less crushed stone. And I'm told it's not the greatest thing in the world for tanks uh, because it has sharp edges. So still going to come here with a plate vibrator, the compactor, and I'm either going to top dress it with sand or pea gravel or both. Anyway, almost done. I front filled it here. Um, the tank is going to have, going to have 11,000 gallons of water, so that's 90,000 pounds. That's 45 tons. So it's going to be very, very heavy. So we're just trying to make this as strong as we can. You can see the sides are an inch and a half. It's a stake every foot. And uh, I think it's pretty strong. The higher part of it is actually partly in the ground. So that'll add strength too. This part over here is actually above ground. And <clears throat> so I might front fill that a little bit more too. But anyway, just about ready for the tank.